Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. We'll guide you through the biggest news of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number four. The Republican presidential hopefuls have just about two months left to connect with voters in Iowa and New Hampshire. Since former President Donald Trump holds a commanding lead in the polls, experts say that the other candidates are focused on becoming the leading alternative in the party. What these candidates want to do is they want to place two and three behind Donald Trump in Iowa and New Hampshire so that they can gain the media attention, the endorsements, the volunteers, and the campaign finance that they need uh, to move on to South Carolina. As we inch closer to primary season, all eyes are on these early states that will have an outsized influence on the 2024 presidential election. I was the first caucus and New Hampshire is the first primary. And even though the number of delegates that will eventually go to the conventions that select the nominee are very small uh, as compared to the total uh, that will go, what it really does is it helps to winnow down the field. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has made Iowa a key focus, aiming to visit all 99 counties there. Former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley is hoping for a strong finish in Iowa, where she just received a big endorsement. She's heading to New Hampshire after holding a town hall in her home state of South Carolina Monday. Trump appeared at the state's Palmetto Bowl matchup on Saturday, where he was met with cheers and some boos. This brings up the question, could another candidate become competitive if the field becomes smaller? This idea of people just doing math and adding up numbers, that's not the way voters vote. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, an outspoken Trump critic, brushed off the possibility of dropping out of the race to consolidate the anti-Trump vote. I would say to everybody out there, let's let the campaign move forward. This is the smallest Republican field at this stage in this century that did not include an incumbent. Voters will see most of the Republican candidates on the debate stage next week. It's not likely that Trump will attend. He skipped the last three debates. Well, we'll start in the sky before we go shopping. And if you flew home yesterday, congratulations. You were part of the record, the all-time highest number of Americans flying in a single day. Certainly, Cyber Monday retailers saw that record and they said, hold on, we are just getting started. Or they're taking off. Or checking out. Americans were setting records over the Thanksgiving holiday. The Thanksgiving holiday period always has the busiest travel day of the entire year for us. Thank you. The Transportation Security Administration says Sunday was the busiest day at U.S. airports ever. Yes, ever. With more than 2.9 million passengers screened at TSA checkpoints nationwide, 10% higher than the equivalent day last year. Airports are very busy, flights are full, um, travel is back in the United States. From the skies to the stores. It's really the Super Bowl for the businesses and merchants. Amped up Americans were spending big on Black Friday to the tune of an estimated $9.8 billion with sales made from mobile devices accounting for more than half of all purchases. The heroes here seem to be the U.S. consumer. They are strong and resilient and they're buying. While the early morning storefront stampede may be a thing of the past, brick and mortar visits were up 4.6% over last year, according to Sensormatic Solutions, some shoppers looking to maintain tradition. One of my favorite activities is going out and Black Friday shopping with my mom when I come home. And some willing to go the distance to get discounts. I got up at 1 a.m. this morning because it's like a two-hour drive. But the spending spree isn't over yet. Adobe Analytics predicts consumers will shell out $12 billion today, cashing in on Cyber Monday deals, which would set another retail record for the books. MasterCard notes that in-store brick-and-mortar sales figures were up more than a percent this year. But an interesting wrinkle, the NFL had its first Black Friday game ever a couple days ago against the Dolphins and the Jets. MasterCard notes that may also have helped out online retailers. Much easier to shop on your couch as you're watching the game. The world's richest man, taken by Israel's prime minister to a kibbutz, attacked by Hamas, October 7th. The terrorists infiltrated into the kibbutz itself. There were umbrella bearers. Musk took some pictures. The editor of a prominent Israeli newspaper calls this a PR visit, calls Musk a blatant anti-Semite, accuses Netanyahu of amoral sycophancy. The backdrop to this visit? 
Well, Musk recently replied, you have said the actual truth to a tweet espousing anti-Semitic tropes that Jews push hatred of whites and promote minority immigration to Western nations. That theory also espoused by the man who murdered 11 Jews at a Pittsburgh synagogue in 2018. Many accuse Musk of overseeing the descent of X into a cesspool of hate, particularly since October 7th. A self-described free speech absolutist, Musk bought Twitter, now X, for $44 billion. That investment is now in danger. There's an exodus of heavyweight advertisers over the hate. Musk has said claims he is anti-Semitic could not be further from the truth. Today, we could not reach him for comment, but Musk and Netanyahu had a chat live on X. They agreed on a lot. Those who are intended murder must, must be neutralized. Uh, then uh, the, the propaganda must stop. Um, and then and they're making uh, Gaza prosperous. And if, 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 if that happens, I think it will be a good future. Well, I hope you'll be involved in it. And I'd love to help. Welcome to Israel, Mr. Musk. Uh, your visit means a lot to us. Israel's president implored Musk to help fight anti-Semitism. You have a huge role to play, and I think we need to fight it together. Because Great. under the platforms which you lead, unfortunately, there's a harboring of a lot of old hate, which is Jew hate, which is anti-Semitism. We have to do whatever, we, whatever is necessary to... Uh, stop the i mean essentially these 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 people have been fed propaganda since they were children we uh, in the jewish faith believe in uh, repentance uh, and atoning for one's sins perhaps that's what's going on right now but the proof will be in the pudding we'll have to see what happens on his platform here he is in vermont small storybook town you wouldn't we're just shocked we're just shocked this morning, one of three Palestinian college students shot over the weekend is out of the hospital, according to a source close to the families. The other two remain in ICU. The mother of victim Hisham Awartani says her son has a long road to recovery. He has another month in hospital um, and then uh, several months of physical therapy. Um, but currently, the doctors say that he's lost uh, functional mobility in his legs. Relatives say the men were visiting Vermont on their Thanksgiving break when they were shot Saturday night. The three of them decided they'd go around the block. They like to walk around the neighborhood when they're there. They've Each uh, each of the other boys have been to my mother's house for Thanksgiving uh, twice. And Hisham has been visiting Burlington for about 10 years. And so he knows the community very, very well. They were just walking, um, talking amongst themselves. They were wearing their... Uh, kafiyas, which are traditional Palestinian scarves. And this gentleman stepped out of the dark and pulled out a handgun and sh fired four times. Investigators are trying to determine if they were the targets of a hate crime. There's no one with common sense who can think about three young men, two of whom were wearing uh, kafiyas, uh, who were speaking a mixture of English and Arabic, walking down a street to suddenly and randomly be, without apparent any, apparently any other motive, attacked by someone and shot by that person and not think that that seems like a crime driven by hate. Officers located the suspect, 48-year-old Jason Eaton, Sunday afternoon near the scene of the attack. Police say he lives in an apartment building in front of the shooting scene. According to an affidavit of probable cause, Eaton told ATF agents, I've been waiting for you. Investigators say a pistol found in his apartment matches the shell casings at the scene and that Eaton acquired the gun legally just a few months ago. He was arraigned Monday and pleaded not guilty. Eaton is being held without bail. The families of the victims released a joint statement Monday calling the attack a crime fueled by hate and saying they welcome the investigation and pursuit of hate crime charges. These three young men grew up in Ramallah. They're best friends from growing up. They grew up under uh, military occupation. And who would imagine that they would come to a place like this to celebrate Thanksgiving? And this is when their lives would be at risk.